This is the Awakening Word brought to you by Rev. Samson Ajitomobi, the President of the Men of Isaka Vision Incorporated and Overseer of the Redemption Faith Churches. So when I say to you most time, nothing encourages a man like answers to prayer. It's an amazing truth. And I'm sure today you will experience answers to prayer. Reverend Ajitomobi is called by God with a mandate to reach the unreached at all cost and reawaken the church to our responsibilities. Every gallow the enemy have set up, by the word of God today, they will go into the same pits. Be blessed. Out of Apostle, chapter 1, verse number 8. There's a well-known scripture for a student of the Bible. The Bible says, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Few thought here as we look at this study is that number one, power is required to convict, convert any life. Why? No life is free. Every life is occupied by some powers. Every life is being manipulated or influenced by some powers and so whatever power that kept you oppressed another power stronger than that will be required to guarantee your freedom so Jesus in commissioning us to go preach the gospel said in clear terms you will receive power in Luke chapter 24 verse 49 Luke 24 verse 49 he said unto them tarry ye here in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high by this time they have known so many things that they needed to know to be able to represent Jesus and Jesus said, do not go yet. Stay here until power is made accessible to you. Christianity can be very frustrating without a display of God's power. So no life is free from certain holds and certain spiritual forces. So he says, for you to be an effective witness to me, I, in Acts of Apostle chapter 1 verse 8, to be an effective witness, he says, you will receive power. But this power is tied to the Holy Spirit. Why? Because there are diverse spirits that supply power to men. So when you speak to certain men, they walk in allegiance to some other strange spirit. So you will receive power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you. To be an effective witness, the power of the Holy Spirit is inevitable. Why? You will be meeting people who have received power from other spirits. And they've been headed into bondage because they covenanted with strange spirits. So the power of the Holy God, the Almighty God, is required for you to be able to exercise deliverance for those whom the enemy has held down into strange habits, strange lifestyle, and helplessness to sin and the pleasure of sin. Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Then 
you become an effective witness from your immediate environment and to the nations of the world. So everyone who witness must have the power that brings conviction to the hearts of men. Must have the power that can discern the needs in a man. Must have the power that can break the spell of the enemy out of the heart of a man. Must have the power to speak. And as you are speaking, it's like you are given a word of knowledge. And the person you are speaking to, see like you have seen his life completely. And he has no choice than to bow. That is witnessing effectively. Our effectiveness in soul winning comes with the power of the Holy Spirit. So as you open your mouth, men with other strange spirit, the spirit in them begins to shiver and begins to run out of their hideout because the power of the Holy Ghost strengthens the utterances of your mouth. You will be a witness. A witness is not afraid if he's empowered by the one that sent him. So we have not sent ourselves. No witness go to testify on his own charge. At his own cost. No. You will receive power and be a witness. So if there's anything we should be crying for today, is power to be a witness. That you can meet a sinner at work, a sinner in the community, everywhere, not judging them, not condemning them, but speaking the word of eternal life to them, bringing them under conviction and repentance, driven by the love of God. So every believer must be a witness. So winning, missions, evangelism, is not a local church department is all believers responsibility so if you're a believer and you believe in the lord jesus christ it is your full responsibility and if you say you're a believer and you're not winning so you just shows that you are not a responsible believer look at the beautiful statement of first samuel chapter 2 verse 30 first samuel chapter 2 verse 30 Wherefore the Lord God of Israel said, I said indeed that thy house and the house of thy father should walk before me forever. But now the Lord said, Be it far from me. What was the reason? I'm reading the reason to you. For them that honors me, I will honor. And they that despise me shall be lightly esteemed. Very important statement. It's called us to be a witness and to witness with the power of God. And it says, Your obedience will be driven out of honor. So you don't feel somebody is forcing you to be a witness for Jesus. No, sir. It is our normal duty, normal responsibility as a believer. And it's an act of honor. So if I'm doing something and I say to you, I feel honored, I could do this for you. It shows I have sown the seed of honor. Is that right? then honor returns back to me. Honor is not a prayer request. Honor is a seed. Honor is not, oh God, give me honor. Oh God, you must honor me today. No, sir. You don't pray for it. You sow a seed for it. I'm not talking of the seed in terms of cash alone as, a, as it were. No, sir. You sow the seed by honoring people around you. You sow the seed by honoring God's instruction over your life. You sow the seed by going to look around for sinners. That is one closing instruction 
the Lord Jesus gave us as he was ascending back to heaven. He says, go and be my witnesses. Go and talk to people about me. Go and tell them I love them and I want them saved. They have been lost children. Go to them and tell them I want them back as lost children. That's what the Bible says. I write unto you children because your sins are forgiven. All that God offers anyone at the first point of contact is forgiveness. No matter how huge or how humanly exaggerated your wrong lifestyle is. It doesn't matter how terrible, how difficult, how bad you have become. No, what matters the most is that you can look at him and he can stretch forth his arm and receive you back home. As, no matter the damage the enemy has done to you, there is a space for you in God. God doesn't condemn people. He wants all lives reconciled back to him. Back to him. All life, not some people. No, God loves the Hindus. God loves the Buddhists. God loves the Muslims. God loves the traditional worshippers. God loves all men and he wants them saved. And he's given us that responsibility to knock every door. To get ready to be persecuted for offering the love of God to our neighbor. Including being beaten, being harassed, being threatened even on your job. And no matter what it is, all manner of challenges will come. But that is it. If you honor him, you will not mind all the persecutions, the challenges, and the crisis. You will not mind at all. So you see, if anybody honors me, I will honor the person. The question today should be, will you honor him? If the answer is yes, honoring him means taking his love to the world he died for. Looking for sinners everywhere. Not that a church sent you as it were, but you understand that I'm being a honor for God as I go to witness to people and rescue a nation and a tribe he loves so much. Much more is it, there is great honor when you do to God what God loves so much. I do hope you all know that God loves to see sinners get saved. So if you say you're a child of God, you're enjoying the benefit of the kingdom and you are thanking God for his faithfulness, for his power, for healing, miracles, deliverances, and you cannot offer God a sinner that has become a saint by your effort. You have not given him honor. See, if anybody honors me, I will honor the person. I'm telling you, when God honors you, honor is good. Think about it. Who knew Peter from Adam? It was an ordinary, maybe school sad failure fisherman. Maybe he even never went to school. He was nobody. Who knew the sons of Zebedee? They spent all their life by the waterside area. People who do not know, the world do not know them. The world does not even fit them. When the nobles are talking, they can't come close. But this man in their crude form make a choice to honor God. And they went preaching the gospel everywhere. On the day of Pentecost, Peter stood and preached the gospel powerfully and 3,000 men got saved. The next time, 5,000 men got saved. They were all 120 when they began that journey and the church kept growing expansion keep coming suddenly a fisher boy fisher man called peter became a reference of discussion men who were given to the laws of jew of the jews men in political class 
men in the military block. Everybody is talking about Peter, talking about Peter. That is the honor you get when you become a voice of a witness for God. Some of us are still living the way we are living today. We have not had enough honor because we have not obeyed the great commission to be a witness to Jesus. Some of you are praying, God, give me a husband. The guy whom you could marry may still be a sinner. To be in the process of witnessing to such a person, he gets saved, get convicted. You are not witnessing because of that. You are just honoring God. And in the process of that, that can be the answer to the prayer you've been praying about. God, give me a job. But as a sinner in your neighbor who is a CEO, you never can tell offering that sinner the gospel of Jesus, even though he's a CEO and he bows his knees to Jesus and look up to you for spiritual nutrient, the same person can start to ask you, so young man, you have offered me eternal life through Jesus Christ. What are you doing for a living? Oh, I'm an applicant. I'm still looking for a job. You sure? What did you study? Oh, I studied so and so. Oh, that's fine. Bring your CV and you go through the normal procedure of being interviewed. If you pass, that is it. And that's one of my way of saying thank you for showing me the love of God. When you honor God, God arranged platforms of honor for you. And the way you honor him is in simple life of obedience to the great commission. It's an act of honor when you offer the love of Christ to your neighbor and he can bow his knees, shed tears for conversion of his wrong lifestyle and bring joy to heaven. And if there is joy in heaven, God looks down. True would is this happen? Say, true this boy, as he went out witnessing and sharing the love of God, with other people and heaven check your status and the state of things around you I said this guy cannot be bringing us joy and we leave him stranded it is immoral for God to do that that is God honoring you back two ways of doing so winning Acts chapter 20 verse 20 and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you but have showed you and have thought you publicly and from house to house what was the dimension of witnessing here publicly and what's the second one house to house i have kept back nothing that was profitable unto you so when you deny people this gospel of jesus christ you have kept back something that is profitable unto them. Is the love of God profitable to any man's heart? Yes. Don't keep it back. Don't keep back anything that is profitable to your neighbor. Don't keep it back. And that is it. Both in teaching you, like I'm doing now, to be a witness for Jesus, it is profitable to you. And when you go out in obedience and witness to sinners in the neighborhood, it is profitable to them. So we've kept back nothing that was profitable to you by teaching you what the Lord required of you and what the Lord commanded of you. And that's why teaching you is like getting my own life free from being guilty to you. So you can face God and said, I didn't have a pastor who challenged me to be a soul winner. We're just dancing and enjoying and waiting for Christ to come. So I'm free from your blood. I have thought you and I'm still teaching you that it is more profitable for you to be a witness of Jesus. Today alone, you have come across several people either at the bus terminus or in the taxis or in the place of work or in the market or in the shopping mall whatever you've been to today you've come across people five minutes of your time two minutes of your time one minute of your time to be profitable to a sinner around you should not be too much for you to do teach you to fear God teaching you to love God 
teaching you to be true to yourself and to God, both in your public life and in your private life. Teaching you to fear God and hate evil. Teaching you to embrace biblical instructions and obey them. Even when they look difficult, it's profitable to be a Christian that is well taught. There are so many Christians that are not well taught. So they are still very arrogant. They still misbehave. They still cannot be led. They cannot be instructed and they obey to instructions. No. They alter instruction midway and twist it to what they want, not what is instructed. I hope you have seen people like that. They change the instruction midway to what they want, not what they've been instructed to do. Nothing is dishonesty like that. It's an act of dishonesty. It shows you are not worthy to be trusted. Because you can change the instruction midway. Are you guys understanding me? So this is very important to our basic Christian living. Now I'm teaching you all that. May you be teachable. May you have good understanding. May you be obedient. Because the strength here is obedience. Obedience to God. Obedience to have a resolve. Anyone that meets me, we hear the gospel. Anyone that miss me, we miss the gospel. So it's, I'm under obligation by God to make sure I write, I write my daily schedule to at least offer somebody, if for five minutes, if for two minutes, the love of God, it is profitable to them. So I thought you and instructed you to do public soul winning and house to house soul winning. Soul winning is not what anybody should pay you for. <laughs> so you don't become a soul winner because of any human promise. You become a soul winner because you truly love God. Effective witnessing must be driven out of love not out of human promises. I love God. So I've gone out there to preach the gospel. Why are you so crazy about preaching for Jesus? Because I love him. He didn't promise me anything, but I love him. Why do you love him? He changed my life. I'm a proof that a life can be changed. I'm a proof that doesn't matter how bad things are around me, something can shift for good. And since I enjoy that benefit, I would like to offer my neighbor the same benefit. So, how do we do this? Publicly, at the bus stop, inside the public vehicle, in the neighborhood, wherever we are, different strategy provided it translates into getting a soul into the kingdom including inviting a sinner for lunch in your house or for dinner in your house was it translates into soul winning was it translate into soul winning that is how it works from house to house, wouldn't that be great that you can, at evening times, when you're not in church, on your own, if you're married, you and your husband, wear your uncle and go from house to house and greeting your neighbors, getting to know them better, that makes a lot of difference. Most of the houses in our neighborhood, we've been there, my wife and I, greeting them, where your neighbors in this community, We'll come and say good evening to you. How are you people doing? How did you find this environment since we came? And through that, hit them with the gospel. Just use everything you know how to use to get men saved. Would that be a worse thing to do? Witnessing to them, are you a teacher? There are other fellow teachers who are sinners. Offer them the love of God. 
Are you a businessman? There are other businessmen who are still not saved. And you're exchanging money together, doing businesses together, doing things together. And the much you were involved together, you didn't deem it fit to offer them the gift of eternal life. But you're exchanging money. Until we begin to value the souls of men more than material gains and support, then we are yet to start the work. Be an effective witness from house to house. What must you do? Number one, be bold to walk up to somebody and break the procession. Everybody's always busy going somewhere. If you don't stop them, they will keep going till they drift into eternal damnation. That's why I thank God for the wisdom of Philip. When the Lord spoke to him in Acts chapter 8 and told Philip, Join yourself to this chariot. A chariot is not like taking a stroll. And by the way, they were traveling. So it's not a gentle move. They were in a hurry going from Jerusalem to Africa and in Ethiopia. And Philip saw them going. Run! That's the urgency it deserves. It deserves what? Running. Run! I won't allow this life skip off. Run! And as he ran, he got close to the chariot. And he asked the man, can I join this chariot? He said, yes, come up. He saw him reading the Bible. We have too many sinners who in their hearts truly love God, but they don't know how to assess God properly. So they read the Bible, they go to church, but they are helpless to sin. So he saw him reading the book of Isaiah and said, Sir, do you understand what thou readest? He said, How can I except someone shares it with me? Friends, somebody you are assuming to be a Christian does not understand how to be a proper Christian except we sit by them joining them on their own chariots because everybody is busy going somewhere are you hearing me i said we run and join them and ask if they understood what it takes to love jesus and to be sold out to jesus honor is good but honor comes by honoring somebody else Will you honor God? Will you honor God? He says, if you honor me, I will honor you. If you don't honor me, then I will not honor you. Will you honor him? Power is required to be an effective witness. Will you ask for the power of the Holy Spirit today? And said, the Holy Spirit, empower empower me Holy Spirit strengthen me Holy Spirit help me I want to go talk to this man I want to go talk to this woman Holy Spirit help me we trust that you've been blessed by this message preached by Reverend Samson Ajitomobi of the Men of Isaka Vision Incorporated. We invite you to worship with us every Sunday at 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. every Tuesday and Thursday at the Men of Isaka Vision Incorporated, Oloruru or Jo Ibadan. Or watch our services online via the Men of Isaka Vision Facebook page and YouTube channel. You can also listen to us on MIVradio.com. For inquiries, please call 0808 085 4818 or send an email to mivmandate2010 at gmail.com. God bless you.